Hello fellow Jerry Kens. I'm worried about Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. If it wasn't for my job or curse as YouTuber that deals with Pokemon, I wouldn't have bought these games and skipped BDSP. By the way, this is coming from the guy that bought Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Sword on launch week, so that's saying a lot. Why am I so not enthusiastic? Kidum Red. <laughs> Now you may be confused because my initial reaction to BDSP was favorable. When that disastrous first trailer came out, I was one of the few people that said the chibi art style was great, and the game could be great. I still stand by that, to a certain point. I still do like the chibi art style, but I said that because I don't care about the graphics or the art style. This game's graphics could like Toy Story 1 Andy for all I care. I cared about the gosh darn gameplay and content in the game. And this game's content and gameplay is getting me concerned. Why am I so concerned with the content and gameplay of these remakes? Part 1. Marketing What makes me worry about BDSP is the marketing, because it's so... weird. Let's compare it to other games in the series, mainly Aura since it's a remake like it. Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire was first revealed in a teaser video, with another video showing some vague footage in May, about 6 months before the release of the game which was November 21st. The first trailer appeared in E3 2014 Nintendo's presentation. Ha! Remember when Pokemon actually participated in those things? Anyways, after that, around every second week of every month until November, they released a new trailer with new footage. Usually with each trailer, they showed at least one new Mega Evolution. Ha! Remember those existed? Or new features like Cosplay Pikachu or the new Contest or Super Secret bases. They basically hyped the game with little bits of information being revealed bit by bit. There was always a new feature or a new Pokemon form that was introduced every month, until an animated trailer to finally top it off on launch day. In total, there were 13 unique trailers with unique footage before launch day. I will have to say Auras had great marketing, and it made me hyped for the game. Anyways, let's compare that to Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. We got the reveal of the game on February 27th, about 9 months before the release of the game. The game was revealed together with Legends Arceus on a Pokemon Presents video. After that, radio silence. We didn't get any new footage or screenshot or any news about the game after that. Then opportunists began to spread rumors everywhere about the state of the game. There was not a single news about the game until a brief 30 second shot of the game running on the new OLED version of Switch in July. It wasn't until August. Almost half a year after the reveal of the game that we got finally new footage for the game, which was a fall trailer. They showed off the new features such as character customization, Pokeball seals, following Pokemon, new contest mode, the Sinnoh Underground, and the Underground Wild Area. After the trailer again, we got a trailer a month and a half later in September which showed off no new features except minor stuff such as the HM move changes, Poffins, and Amity Square. It's now a month before release. There has been basically only 3 trailers of the game now, much less than 13. Basically the only new things in the game revealed, which are, you know, stuff that gives me reason to buy a fucking remake and not just go play Pokemon Platinum, are the only stuff in the August trailer and a few minor bits in the revealed teaser and September video. Also previously, usually the director of the game Junichi Masuda would go on a giant press tour to advertise the game for release. He would appear frequently while in interviews, usually accompanied by Shigeru Mori or little skits on the Nintendo channel. Perhaps COVID-19 traveling restrictions is to blame for this, but I've barely seen anyone talk about this game in interviews, even taking place in Japan. Instead, they sent out reviews copies out to influencers, which was the first time that ever happened for a Pokemon game. This is really bad marketing compared to trailers in my opinion, because I'm not gonna watch some YouTuber that I don't give a damn about for new information about the game. Let's release a new trailer or a mini demonstration or something like the previous games. So, what I'm saying is, why is there so little marketing towards this game compared to other games like Oras or Sword and Shield or even the fucking Let's Go games? So let's play out this logically. There are only three explanations to this lack of marketing. One. Pokemon Company's marketing department is being lazy and not marketing the game. But that makes no sense because they have no reason not to market. 2. Pokemon Company and ILC are not marketing the new features we don't know about yet because they don't want to spoil the game. But based on Pokemon's track record of, you know, spoiling everything before the game comes out in the past installments, I find that unlikely. Also, this game has so much bad press and publicity right now, and if this game actually had fucking platinum content in it, they would have confirmed it ages ago. Or 3. 
they are not releasing many videos because they don't have many new features to show. This is just a copy paste of Pokemon Diamond and Pearl and they don't have anything to show off. No Mew areas, no Mew forms for a Sinnoh Pokemon, no Platinum content, no Delta episode version equivalent for Giratina. Good God help me! The first two explanations are not impossible, but what do you think is the most likely explanation, fellow Jerrycans? Also, the Pokemon company seems to have more faith in Legends Arceus because they started doing cryptic bullshit ARG marketing in October instead of the game that comes out in a month. See why I'm so fucking worried about this game? When was the last time Pokemon didn't barely do any marketing because there was barely mute content to show off? Oh yeah, the last time that happened was Pokemon Ultra Minge and Ultra Queef. And that game turned out to be, you know, terrible. The titular Gen 4 remake seems to be sidelined for the experimental Legends Arceus, which quite frankly, doesn't look good to me. They have more faith in the Genshin ripoff, and they outsource the remakes to some obscure developer. Remember when I said the past is getting brighter in my previous video? Good times. Part 2. How fucking unoriginal. I have a challenge for you all. I'm gonna ask you a simple question for you all jerry cans. Except for the Mew clothing options in the Mew Underground Wild Area, can you name a single Mew concept from Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl that wasn't in the original games? Like, revamped underground hidden bases and contests don't count. These are all stuff from the original games but with better graphics and quality of life improvements. You can't answer my question now, right? My point is, Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl is the most unoriginal game since USUM. I'm worried this game will be just Diamond and Pearl but in HD GB, with closed options, wild area, and quality of life improvements. No Mew major features, no major story changes, no Mew Pokemon, no Mew Pokemon forms such as Reno forms and Mega Evolutions. Ah! Recently, I did an hour long review of Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire of how underrated it was. It's a long review, I put a lot of effort into it so go check it out wink wink, but since it's long, I'll summarize it briefly. Oras, despite its two faults, which is ignoring Pokemon Emerald, content in the main campaign and the easy difficulty, was a very refreshing game for the series, despite it being a remake. Introduced a ton of new features such as the excellent bottom screen catching mechanics and sky soaring with Latios or Latias. There were also new additional forms to Pokemon such as Mega Evolutions for many Hoenn Pokemon, and the Hoenn Pokedex was expanded to include new evolved forms such as Gallade. And most of all, all the characters got redesigned, and they were much more well written than the original game, so they were quite lovable. Compared to BDSP, no Mew Sinnoh Mega Evolutions, no Mew Sinnoh Regional Forms, that's reserved for Legends Arceus, everyone is stuck wearing the same fucking clothes, and every dialogue seems to be the same so far. No Mew Groundbreaking Mechanic that'll make Sinnoh feel refreshing, the map looks exactly the same as before, and here's a fun little detail. You know the bridges on the map? They were so precise on making the map be exactly the same as the original games, down to the number of planks on bridges. These people are fucking insane. What I'm saying is, the unoriginality and the uncreativeness of this game is astounding and I hate it. I don't want it to be an exact one-to-one -one remake. This isn't a remastering of a video game, it's a goddamn remake. And they keep marketing the fact that they were faithful to the games. God, I hate that word. It implies so much. Like the fans weren't mad at the previous games because they were unfaithful to the past games. We were upset because it was just fucking bad, or they tried to shove BS down our throats. Who do they think we are, idiots? Yes, we like our nostalgia for old stuff like the original games, but at the same time, we want to new stuff too. That's why I'm so angry about BDSP, it's because there's almost nothing new. They're either too lazy, or rushed, or cutting corners to come up with new stuff to improve Sinnoh, and instead copy the exact same fucking game as before. When Pokemon Oras came out, I daydreamed about what a Sinnoh remake would be like. Being able to use Unubo and Chaos Pokemon in Sinnoh, Dialga and Palkia getting new forms, event Pokemon like Shaman, Darkrai, and Arceus getting special treatment like Deoxys, having a not adult episode but a gracious episode post-game, and hopefully a Battle Frontier. But that was my daydream of a time when Game Freak or Pokemon Company actually cared, but that time is long gone. It's just endless cynicism by pandering to mobile gacha gamers, China and Tencent, and copying other successful Nintendo games. Even the blatant cash grab that are the Let's Go games had new stuff in it that wasn't in the original Kanto games or the Gen 3 remakes, such as the mute catching mechanic, new characters, revamped characters, improved story, and everyone got redesigned, giving a reason to buy them. And at least Kanto Pokemon had regional forms at Mega Evolution. This game is worse than that! When they were marketing the Oras games, they kept emphasizing how Mew Hoenn is with taglines such as Mew Hoenn Adventure, 
and kept showing every single Mew feature or Mew character or Mew Mega Evolution. With BDSP, they keep emphasizing about how they've been faithful to the original games and how we can re-experience Sinnoh again. Gee, it's like as if they knew the newer games suck and the older games are better. Yeah, this is disgusting. Anyways, this whole effort seems like a waste of effort if you think about it. Why make the chibi graphics or make a fucking remake at all if you're gonna keep everything mostly the same? All of these new features except the chibi can probably be recreated in a ROM hack. They could have just put out a remaster with updated music and it would be the same thing. It's not like Nintendo fans are not willing to spend money and buy the same game numerous times. Bottom line, this game remaking feels almost like a waste of time for me. Part 3 Erasing Pokemon Platinum from History What's worse than the fact that this is just a Gen 4 Chibi HD game remaster is that it's even pretending as if Pokemon Platinum doesn't exist. It's not just the fact that the Battle Frontier won't be obviously in the game because it's fucking missing the Atlas map. You think I'm Where is it? Where the hell is it? Where the hell is it? I put this out on Twitter, but the game is going the extra mile to make fucking sure the game is exactly like the original Diamond and Pearl, not Platinum. For example, Gardenia's Gym. Gone is Platinum's cool clock gimmick. We have the lazy forest maze from DP that is about as bland as Erika's Gym from Gen 1. Or the Amity Square at Hearthstone City. Pokemon Platinum improved the original Amity Square, which was basically an empty plot of land, by adding a lake in the middle and a teleportation maze where you can get various items. Guess which game BDSP is choosing to follow? Fuck. Also, the main characters aren't wearing Platinum clothes. You know, the Platinum clothes would have been a perfect excuse to be there as winter clothes for the snow route if you think about it. Like how Dawn wore it in the anime temporarily for the cold. But we don't have that in the trailers and I bet Platinum clothes won't be in these games because fuck you, we're trying to erase history here. I instantly knew something was wrong the moment they did the whole Pokemon 25th anniversary montage. It was a montage where they showed every Pokemon game in history and look how fast Platinum goes by. They should just dub Masuda's voice saying, Uh oh guys, ignore that. That game doesn't exist anymore. Don't look over there. Look over here at our crappy remake. I'm honestly even surprised they even acknowledged its existence. How embarrassing. And don't type in the comments, Oh, Porygon Z and the Shaming Flower NPCs and trailer. These are minor things that should be there as a given. I want proper platinum content like the Distortion World, proper treatment with Giratina, expand the lore like the Delta episode did, and a new Battle Frontier. Is that too much to ask for when Pokemon Hardcore and Soul Silver and Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire accomplished this years ago? Ugh, anyways, I could go on and on about how Diamond and Pearl is a terrible game, how Platinum saved Generation 4 and Sinnoh, and how copying only the DP games is a terrible idea, but I won't do that in this video. I'll be making a proper Platinum review and retrospective before the remake comes out, so look forward to that. I'm also streaming both Pokemon Platinum and Diamond in preparation for the release of BDSB on Twitch, so come check it out. Link is in the description below. I'll probably give more respect to Pokemon Platinum than the Pokemon Company or Masuda ever will. That being said, maybe they're hiding Platinum content to be a surprise. Maybe this is all a ruse and Platinum stuff will be in the post game. I hope I'm wrong and that's right, because don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to curse these games to be terrible, I want these games to be good for God's sake. Conclusion Well, to summarize, I don't think this game will be very good because the trailers so far have failed to show that there's fucking new content enough to warrant 60 smackaroos, and the game is unoriginal as hell. I still see no reason to play this game based on the trailers, and Platinum is already the more definitive Sinnoh experience. I can just go play that excellent game instead of this pointless remake. I wanted a remake with the quality of bare minimum level of Pokemon Oras, but that's asking too much for Game Freak and the Pokemon Company these days, apparently. If they're putting all their eggs in the Legends of Arceus basket, the least I can do is hope that Legends of Arceus is a good game, then this stops their fire. But, still. If this game is faithful to the original Sinnoh games, it'll at least have good map design, many areas to explore, and most of all, good music. So if they're faithful and not fuck up things that were originally there in DP, the worst it can do is be an average Pokemon game. So if you're being hyped about Pokemon BDSP, don't let my cynicism deflate your hype. This video is just expressing my concerns and frustrations, and my opinions. You don't need to give a damn about it. And maybe I am wrong. Maybe BDSP could be one of the best remakes like Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver. 
With Oras, the Delta episode was revealed about a week before release. Maybe the elusive Platinum content will be in the game and BDSP could be one of the best remakes. We'll find out next month one way or another. And of course, the worst it can be is an average Pokemon game. But, is that what you want? Just an average Pokemon game that was just made to make money from nostalgic Sinnoh fans? If you're one of those people that just say, I just want to play some Sinnoh again after many years and listen to the lake theme, you'll probably be happy with this game. Well, I'm not one of those people. I love this franchise. I want more than average. I want more. And I know it. Should. I want Pokemon to be good. And that's why I've been complaining the whole video. Well, I'm glad I didn't grow up with the Gen 4 games because I think I would have been devastated if Hoenn got this treatment. Feels good to be a Gen 3-er.